I am Heidi Benjaminson, your host of Confidence Coaching, a podcast for mothers of teenagers who want to feel more hope and less worry. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to episode 133, Envy and Jealousy. I'm glad you're here again, and I appreciate the show reviews, likes, and shares. Happy Mother's Day to all of the women and to all the men who are celebrating the women in their lives. Y'all, mothering is a verb. I've been mothered by a lot of women, and I've watched over a lot of children who I consider mine. I'm very protective of the children who have grown up with my children in school or the neighborhood or our church community. I can feel the mama bear rise up in me when anyone says anything negative about them. This podcast will release after Mother's Day. I hope you told people what you want. No one can read our minds. I went and bought my new annual pair of running shoes for my family to give me. Regardless of the day of the week or the year that it is, a good practice is to stop and ask, what do I need today? Then listen, pause until you have a good answer, a real answer, the answer to what you need, not what your spouse or your child or your sister needs, what you need. Then figure out how to honor that. Today, I want to talk about envy and jealousy, why these emotions are normal, and how to make sure you don't create disconnection in our relationships because of them. I'm going to use the words pretty interchangeably, but there is a difference in the two words. I've learned a lot about this from Brene Brown. These are two emotions that she highlights in her work and in the book, Atlas of the Heart. We often use the word jealousy when we're really feeling envious, but It's not really that important which word we use. We're envious when we want something that someone else has. And jealousy is defined by scientists as when we fear losing a relationship that we already have. I just thought I'd share those two definitions. And I highly recommend that you get Brene Brown's book, Atlas of the Heart, or watch her HBO Max special to hear more about naming emotions. Because naming and understanding the root of our emotions, it gives us the power over them and it anchors us to change how we move in the world and create deeper connection with others. And I think jealousy and envy can really block connection. So I want to dive into these emotions today. So we all generally use the word jealous in the context of being envious of what someone else has. And I'm going to stick with that usage in the episode today because I don't think, and my research shows this too, that there's a big deal in interchanging the words. Envy and jealousy are very normal human emotions. In fact, scientists believe our brains are designed for primal jealousy in relationships, especially marriage or sexual relationships, to protect human procreation. So if you're feeling jealous of a mate, you might act to keep your mate's attention. So some jealousy might be useful overall. Rarely, though, is envy, wanting what another person has and feeling deprived because we don't have it, rarely is that useful. In fact, we're given divine direction not to envy what others have. And several reasons are because envy blocks gratitude and envy blocks connection with other people. Now, I'm not going into the specifics of jealousy in relationships in this episode, Maybe I will in a future one. I don't know. I want to talk specifically about how these emotions rob us of happiness that we can feel today and push people away from us. I think jealousy is a lot more apparent and visible than we think it is. We think that we're just thinking or feeling it. And in reality, it oozes out of our words, our actions, our body language, and more. So Like most of the emotions I talk about here, we aren't bad or wrong to feel them. What we do with the emotions and how to react and manage them is what will either create joy and peace or will create anxiety and loneliness in our lives. I can want a beach house like a friend has. I can want my kids to go to a good college or make good choices. I can want my business to grow like someone else. 
I can want a car like someone else. The wanting is normal. How I let this affect my interactions and my thought processes is what is most important. And this is what is the key indicator. If these emotions are driving your car and are projected into the world in your interactions, or if you manage them in a confident way, the key indicator is your self-esteem, your confidence. Do you like yourself exactly as you are now? Do you feel lacking and so very broken and so less than others? Or do you feel good about yourself, all of yourself, your shiny and dull parts? Jealousy combined with a low sense of self is ugly. It will look like criticizing others, saying very mean and judgmental comments, and sometimes even just small mean and judgmental comments. And because few people want to be around this, and it's draining on others, we can't cultivate strong friendships and relationships in that place. I know this because I feel like I had to break through critical and judgmental mindsets myself. And I can look back and see how in my teen years and 20s, I was so critical and judgmental of others. I'm not sure if that's because what I saw other people modeling to me, or if it was a part of my default mental programming. I think a combination What's important is that I didn't feel good at the time, and although I'm not sure jealousy was always the root, I know the criticism and judginess wasn't pretty, and 150% was rooted in a low sense of who I was, feeling very less than. And since we're all a work in progress, and we're all working to develop a firmer sense of self, don't worry if you feel jealousy. I think it's a pretty interesting emotion to dive into because it shows us a lot about our inner work. What do I really want in life for myself and my family? And what do I really like really think about who I am? I'm specifically doing this podcast now in the spring because I'm seeing it, maybe feeling it myself and hearing it in my coaching sessions in a lot of scenarios. I hear people say, I'm jealous my daughter isn't going to get into these top schools or didn't get into these top colleges. And I can't believe this kid did. He doesn't have the same grades my daughter did. Or this, I didn't get the promotion that I know I deserve and Jane got it and now I can't stand to be with her. Or this, I overheard this in a store the other day. I'm not going to my neighbor's graduation party. Her kids are so spoiled and are so ungrateful anyways. Jealousy can look like criticism shaming, shutting people out, only wanting to talk about the bad in other people. I was in a work lunch group well over 25 years ago with a few women I worked with who really approached tearing people down like a sport. Now I can see how it was all a cover up for jealousy and really low self-esteem. Someone who loves themselves doesn't tear others down. Jealousy can look like not being able to be happy for others. It can look like not being able to congratulate someone or ask them genuine curious questions about the good in their life. When we're happy for others, we smile, we approach them, we ask questions. We want to ride in their new car. We want to tour their new house. One of my close friends bought a new boat last week. I happened to be at her house and I wanted to see it. I'm thrilled for her. Well, don't we all want a friend with a boat? No, seriously, being happy for others connects us to them. When I'm not happy for my friends, I distance myself. We built a new house nine or 10 years ago, a modest house. Well, it was bigger for us and nice. It was obvious to me who was happy for us and who was jealous. And let me say, I know jealousy has been obvious on my face too. Seeing how others reacted though, it gave me so much awareness about how obvious it is and reason to work on figuring out my jealousy. So let's go through a simple exercise and I have a few ways to manage your jealousy and be more secure. Okay, I want you to think, what have you been critical about in the last few days? Maybe you even said, oh, I'm jealous of this. Now, what is it? As you scroll through social media, what brings up your envy? When honor roll is posted and your kids aren't on it, what comes up for you? As college acceptances and weddings and baby announcements are posted, what comes up for you? Remember, we're loving all of it. We aren't judging our own human emotions. Just see it. Write it down. 
We have to see and love these parts of ourselves first. Locking them in the dark basement doesn't get rid of them. It only locks them away so they rot and smell and fester and mold. We want to invite these pieces into the living room and examine them. Now love on yourself. Tell yourself, I want this. I want my child to go to college and they're struggling so hard now and they can't. I want my daughter to get married and she isn't even dating. Allow the wants and find a place for them. We aren't burying the wants. We just need to have them in a smaller place. You decide what you want. Maybe you want a job with better benefits or you want your child to not be making self-destructive choices. Now, I have two tricks to manage how you feel inside and to manage how you show up. What emotions exude from you that go out to the world? One is an inside action and one's an outside action. The inside action is practicing gratitude. You can still want something else. You can still want your daughter to have less anxiety and get better grades and be grateful for her teachers and her friends. We have to have daily practices, written or mental, to be grateful for what we do have. We can want a bigger car or a nicer vacation and still be grateful for the backyard we get to spend our summer in. Gratitude attracts more goodness into our lives. The more we do this, we have less mental space to ruminate on what we lack. I remember in my first home, I'd occasionally have bouts of jealousy of people with bigger, nicer homes. And as soon as I started listing and loving my big backyard, my white cabinets in my kitchen, my hardwood of this nice small home, the jealousy couldn't grow because gratitude had taken up more space. And if I was jealous, I'd feel ashamed to maybe make friends and invite them over. If I saw myself doing that, I would stop and I would say, I want people to like me for who I am. I want friends who like people with old or new houses. I want to be confident with whatever I have. So maybe there was some jealousy, but it was in the back seat and confidence was driving. So gratitude is your inside tool for jealousy. The outside tool is visualizing yourself acting in a way that isn't jealous, in a self-confident and self-assured way. One way I like to do this is to watch other people, then practice myself being like them. Watch the most confident person you know. Remember, confidence isn't arrogance. Arrogance is, I need to be better than everyone because I have a very small sense of self. Confidence isn't comparing themselves to anyone else in the room. I love to do this, and I've changed so much about my mannerisms by watching and then copying people. People who are happy for others, they smile, they ask positive questions, not leading questions laced with criticism of the other person. Practice the mannerisms of someone who is secure with what they have in life, where they are, the choices their children are making, and can then interact with others. And secure doesn't mean you love and wouldn't want to change anything. Secure just means you aren't hyper-focused on what other people think about you. Let me show you a few examples. Let's do one that we can all relate to and is simple. Let's say I'm very jealous of my friend Jen's car. It's a new, beautiful car with all the bells and whistles that I would really love that would make my life so much easier. When I see her in the Target parking lot and she's in her car, Confidence will go up to her and smile and compliment her and her car. Ask to see it. Ask how nice it is, if I genuinely think it is. Confidence will say, I'm happy for her. Jealousy would scowl, look away, like not ask Jen about it. And if she's a really good friend and I did this, I didn't even mention it. This is the really disconnecting part of jealousy. Because it's weird for a good friend not to ask about something like that. Especially because it only takes five minutes to say, hey, let me see this. The inside cure to that jealousy in that situation is to say to yourself, yes, I admit I do wish I had a nicer car and I'm so grateful I do have my 20-year-old car. Jealousy will criticize or wonder how Jen and her husband can afford it. That isn't gratitude and it isn't confidence. Jealousy will make other assumptions and shame her for getting a new car every two years and wonder how they can make such poor financial decisions to lease a new car. All that criticism is warning to look at the jealousy and ask what this is about. 
all of those thoughts and conversations we might have behind Jen's back, those all repel people from our lives and they repel our own self-love and self-acceptance. Another example, it's graduation season. So let's talk jealous of our friends, children's accomplishments. Let's say I'm feeling jealous that my neighbor's daughter graduated top of her Ivy League college class and is engaged and is going to law school. Let's just heap on all the wonderfulness. And my daughter hasn't done any of that. These are things we don't admit to a lot of people other than just our life coaches and our therapists and maybe our closest friends. But we're human and we're jealous. When the neighbor's daughter comes home, confidence looks like texting your friend to say that you want to come over and hug her daughter and say hi. Confidence will smile at both of them, asking to see the engagement ring, asking how she got engaged, ask about law school, ask about how she decided which one to go to, since she probably had 10 to choose between. Confidence will happily answer questions about your daughter who's taking a year off and might work at the mall or is changing majors again. Confidence doesn't apologize for their progress or lack of progress that you might perceive in your children. You're secure that everything is going to work out. Now, yes, You can still want certain types of success for your children. It's healthy to want education and success. The goal is to be secure in our desires and to be happy for those of others. This isn't a zero-sum world of college degrees and whatever success is going to look like. Jealousy will always have us thinking that someone else took something from us or they have it and we want it. The inside cure in this case is to remind yourself that you do want growth and education for your children and you are grateful for dot, dot, dot. Then make your mind list at a minimum three things that you're genuinely grateful for with your children. They are alive. Name smart choices they are making. Remind yourself how kind and loving they are. The more good we can see and celebrate in others, the less jealousy we feel and the more goodness we attract into our lives. The less jealousy we feel, the richer and deeper friendships we will develop with friends and family. The less jealous we feel and allow to run our lives, the less insecurity we feel, which means confidence is driving. We'll smile more, no matter what. Our buckets are fuller, so we have more to give. We then have more love to share, which ultimately ends up filling up our bucket. And remember, Feeling jealous means you're human. We all do that from time to time. We aren't robots. It's just what we do with the emotion and if we manage it and if we can pivot to gratitude and show up with confidence that makes all the difference. That's it for this week. If you would like personalized weekly private one-on-one coaching to show up with less jealousy and much more confidence, sign up for a consult call at HeidiBenjaminson.com. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family, not a perfect mother. Our families want us to feel confident, anchored, and calm. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week.